Uh, my name is Peter Aidney. used to be a software engineer um, and I'm 46 years old now, but I'm 16 years into retirement. I am Julian Saunders. This is my wife, Kirsten. We were hoping to retire next year. I'm Christy. And I'm Bryce. We used to work in Toronto and even on two engineering salaries, it wasn't enough to buy a house. So instead of buying a house, we actually put our savings towards building um, a portfolio and investing. And as a result of that, we were able to retire at the ages of 31 and 32. Retirement just means in, in the new definition that you have a choice. It's less about retiring and more about having the freedom to not have to rely on a job for money. It's really about thinking about the kind of life that you want and seeing your money as a tool to enable that vision to come to life. FIRE stands for Financial Independence Retire Early, and it's based on the principle that you can retire not based on your age, but by how much you save of your income uh, every year. Instead of doing the traditional path where you save a little bit over your 50-year career, you would save significantly more, invest significantly more over a 10 or 15-year period and have the ability to retire early. You don't have to be this really badass monk living in a tent in the woods. You just have to be slightly less ridiculous than average. I always felt like I was living an extremely fancy life. It just wasn't quite as ridiculous as my guy in the next cubicle who maybe had a brand new BMW and I had like an old Subaru. These small decisions make a huge difference in terms of the percentage of your money that you spend. I grew up in a pretty frugal household in Canada with parents who weren't really flashy with their limited money. And I thought that was normal. So when I got a good job in engineering, kind of kept that same lifestyle, but I got paid more of an American professional salary, which meant that most of it was just getting not spent. What do you do with spare money? And of course that led to investing. It turns out if you do that for seven to 10 years with the majority of your money, you have enough to live off forever, just based on like the dividends and the ongoing capital gains of this chunk of money that you've saved. I think the pandemic certainly caused people to re-examine their relationship with work, but it also forced you to re-examine your relationship with spending. Something as big as this cooking at home, I mean, food for a lot of people is the second or third largest expense that they have. And so if, even if you can just make a tiny dent in that budget, that money can go towards paying off debt or ramping up investments. When you figure out how all these different systems kind of work together, it almost becomes like a superpower. If you are location independent, basically it makes you very flexible. So for us, we actually traveled the first five years of retirement. And when we visited places like Poland or Portugal, and as well as Thailand, we were able to live easily on $20,000 a year because the cost of living is just so much lower than um, big cities in North America. We take a far more flexible process than most fire aficionados, mainly because the traditional fire formula assumes that your expenses remain fairly stagnant. We do not have the luxury of having such a predictable life. We have a four-year-old, and then we also support Julian's mom. Anytime you have more dependence or more demands on your income, the larger your expenses are, the more difficult it's gonna be. Fire community has been accused of like, is this only for privileged people? I actually didn't grow up in Canada. I was born in China. And um, at one point, my family lived on 44 cents a day. So I know what it's like to struggle. The less you earn, the more difficult life is. And that means making these changes is even more valuable. It's not just one size fits all. You can actually just use the portfolio to cover part of your expenses. Like maybe you can just bring down your number of hours that you have to work. Well, I'm a carpenter and I do that for fun, but if I ever needed to make money, I could just do that professionally. There are different versions of FI that makes it a little more inclusive to different income levels. And we wanted to make sure that we served as a bit of a lighthouse to all of the other uh, black people out there. There's been a lot of talk about racial justice. When we think about social equity and social progress, economic freedom is really the last kind of leg for African Americans. And so when you talk about FIRE being something that they can have greater control of their finances, it's a really appealing offer. It's far more appealing than working your butt off 
to only not get promoted or to join the ranks of less than 1% of corporate leadership that looks like you. I probably would have been laid off in my last job if it wasn't for us becoming financial independent. Do we really want to work like crazy and pay off a mortgage and then die at our desk? The advice that we've been given doesn't work in this environment anymore and we need to write a new rule book. We need to learn how to invest and we need to have all these backup plans in case we get screwed again as proven by the pandemic, by the employers and by the economy. We've been criticized for the past five years by saying, oh, fire only works because the stock market is on a tear and the economy is expanding and there's no recession. Well, this is now the third recession that we've been through personally while on this fire journey. And if anything, it's just proving that fire is the only path that makes any sense because any strategy that relies on your employment being stable, that just doesn't work. A lot of identity is wrapped up in our money decisions. It's actually very easy here in the United States to uh, look like you're rich even though you're not, given the access to credit. Secondly, in a lot of cases, it's actually very expensive just to maintain certain images required to work certain jobs. I don't really take these social cues and engineers are notorious for being clueless like this. So you have this 45 year old man like wearing a rippy plaid shirt with paint on it and a huge backpack and riding a homemade electric mountain bike to the grocery store. And I think that's a great thing. But it also, of course, depends on your personality type. Like I am a novelty seeker and I love change and adventure. After we had our son, it was the first time that I realized something as simple as just having paid leave wasn't available to me. And it was only because the company that I worked for, like unfortunately a lot of companies in the US, don't offer any kind of benefit that allows fathers to be there. When the pandemic happened, we found out at, at almost the exact same time that my father was diagnosed with brain cancer. Against all odds, he seems to be fine now, but it really goes to show you, it's not just about the financial part of fire. Time is the best thing that money can buy. Like when your father gets sick and the amount of time that you spend with him because you don't know how much time is left, that is mo worth more than any like extra money that an employer can give you, any promotion, any kind of title. This movement is not really about the money. It's about a much larger social shift. The more people see it as a viable path, I believe the more difficult it will be for employers to keep their workforce, particularly the most talented amongst them, because you will need more than money to motivate attract them. me yeah. and to motivate me. I think this movement has the potential to fundamentally change the way that we uh, view work. Uh, and uh, I'm really excited to see what happens over the next coming years.